G'day team, it's your old mate the Kiwi Badger and I hope like hell this footage doesn't corrupt. Hey guys, it's been about a month since uh, I've been on a bike. A little tack is playing rugby. Um, and that is down to me uh, suffering a bit of a bit of concussion. Um, I showed you the scar or the, the wound or the injury on my last video. <coughs> um, I slipped over at work on ice and um, yeah, my feet just went out straight out from underneath me and I landed on my shoulders and head, um, cracking my head open, splitting open my scalp. And luckily, there was no um, there was no fracture or break in the skull. Um, <coughs> yeah, I've just got concussion, and um, I would normally rate myself as being uh, quick-witted and. Uh, fluid with words and discussion. I found it quite hard. Um, I get sort of distracted in the middle of a sentence and, and lose the words or lose the intent of whatever it was I was supposed to be talking about. And that's that, that's down to any kind of subject matter. <coughs> um, I, can, I can be having a conversation about the weather and I just all of a sudden draw a blank and can't talk and it's really quite frustrating for me uh, disconcerting and a little scary um, as I say it's been I think it's been uh, three three weeks three and a half weeks since that accident happened um, and I'm only back at work now <coughs> um, as of this, this, I'm recording this on a Sunday so tomorrow I'm back at work for two hours a day a couple of weeks ago um, so two weeks after the accident I was going back to work for two hours a day and uh, staring at a computer screen for two hours a day um, that was my limit I it was sort of it drained me mentally and I was uh, really quite tired and we then have to go home and sleep and that's the um, that's the main fix for concussion is rest and sleep I find it really really hard to do that because I guess when my my dad as a, as a kid my dad would whenever he had spare time would um, fill his time with tasks and objectives and jobs and um, I've taken that on in spades I find it really hard to sit down and do actively do nothing um, I've lost a bit of drive and a bit of energy to do things um, and I don't, I don't know why it's not like depression or anything I just you know Normally I'd, I'd have a, an itch to get on a bike at least once a week and go for a good ride and get it out of my system. It was kind of like my my therapy, um, you know, my break away from reality, just me on my own doing my thing. Um, but I haven't even really had the urge to do that. <clears throat> I'm doing it now because the bikes haven't been running in, you know, a month and they need to be run to keep them functioning properly keep the batteries charged so yeah I am recovering I am getting better um, but it's it's a slow road I'm contemplating um, selling both bikes and um, buying a cruiser I currently as far as motorcycles are concerned I currently have everything I need the problem is it's within two motorbikes. I've got the, the theatre and uh, 
the fun and the noise in the VTR and I've got the comfort, the sensibility and the range in the, uh, in the ST. I want to combine the two. The reason I want to combine the two is my days of touring are, are pretty numbered in as much that I, I've, I've been everywhere around New Zealand. I'd like to go again but I want to do it with my fiance and um, for me touring is about being on the bike, it's about getting to the destination, it's not so much about the destination, it's just about the journey getting there. I love being on the bike. I don't like stopping. Unless it's some kind of spectacular view, view I don't like stopping. Um, but uh, my fiance, she likes to explore, uh, take photos. She's, uh, she's into her photography. So obviously me not wanting to stop is not much fun for her because she wants to stop and explore and take photos and I fully get it, it's not all about me. If she's coming with me it's about us. The problem is, is those of you who do touring are well aware, all your valuables are on the bike. So I don't like leaving the bike. And also too you're dressed up in a whole bunch of uh, safety equipment. So it's not really conducive to uh, to exploring and going hiking and that kind of thing, you know. Most of the touring I do, I do in, in the hotter months. And by the time you get off the bike, you start roasting. So um, we're going to be doing some touring, uh, but we're going to be doing it in my new car. I'm getting a new car in, um, in about a month's time. Um, nothing, nothing uber spectacular or flash, it's, uh, it's better than what I'm driving now, and, um, yeah, I'm looking forward to getting it and driving it, um, so yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll be doing more touring and more, um, adventuring and exploring on a car-based platform. But obviously I've still got a passion for riding, I love riding. So uh, having a, maybe a cruiser might be a better go I think. The cost involved in having two motorcycles over 600ccs in New Zealand, um, yeah, it's, it gets up there that's for sure. Yeah, it's $550 per motorcycle per year to register it to have the, um, the vehicle licensing paid up obviously and then there's warrants or certificates of fitness to be done um, insurance you know I've got to have insurance full cover on both bikes um, and then there's the cost of running them <laughs> so you know it's, it's an expensive process or an expensive exercise to have two motorcycles but I'm not living my life without a motorbike. I can guarantee you that. I've never actually been down this way. I've always wondered what's down here. So let's go and have a look. We'll drop this this bad boy off and uh, jump on the VTR very shortly. Oh, the old ST. Or should I just keep the ST and sell the VTR? Is that what I should do, do you think? Oh, here comes the bloody rain. Here comes the bloody rain! Ooh, what's that? Defense, ah, Defense Force. That's probably radar for Ohaki Air Base. I'd imagine which is over there. <laughs> it's, this goes to show New Zealand's attitude around things. You know, that is a radar station for an Air Force base. Not that we have any fighter jets. 
Not that we have attack helicopters, you know, we barely have an air force. But there's not even anyone guarding it. And if there were people guarding it, they wouldn't be armed. Oh, she'll be right, mate. No one's gonna, no one's gonna have a crack at the old radar base. So, what cars have I been test driving? What car am I gonna buy? Well, I can tell you, I've been looking at the last of the real full-size sedans. Um, currently, I've got a bit of a people mover, um, but I've got less and less need for a people mover. So, but I still want a car that fits. You know, has a bit of space, so I've been looking at full-size sedans. Now, um, that kind of leaves Holden Commodores and Ford Falcons. Specifically, XR6s, like I've just gone past. And SV6s, like this blue one here. So that's what I've been looking at. Um, very timely that both cars are in my video. Um, and what, what have I discovered? Well I've discovered that um, the XR6, the Ford Falcon XR6, is a, uh, I think that's a, shit, is it a 4 litre straight 6 um, large sedan? Um, it doesn't have a huge amount of extras. Its level of appointment is uh, uh, fairly meagre for an XR6, which is supposed to be like entry-level luxury sports saloon. Okay. Then you've got the SV6, which is like the entry-level executive full-size saloon with uh, hints to uh, sportiness, I guess. And that's a 3.6 litre V6. Now I've always been a Ford man. <laughs> always been a Ford man. And I've always given um, my Holden friends, given them absolute shit about having Holdens. Um, or supporting Holdens. Especially in the V8 supercar series. Um, and um, yeah. So I'm buying a Holden. <laughs> I'm buying a Holden SV6. It's slightly older. It's a 2013. It's in immaculate condition. One owner, New Zealand new. So it's not an import. Um, it's done uh, 70,000 kilometres, which is probably like 50,000 miles. Um, yeah, and that's costing me under $15,000. Okay. That car brand new is about a $60,000 vehicle. Um, I could have bought, so that's a VE, that's the model, it's a VE 2 Series Commodore SV6. Um, I was also looking at the VF, which is the last the last of the full-size Commodores after the VF I don't know what it is after the VN, I'm not sure um, but that goes to a smaller chassis obviously then it has a smaller body with less room so it's yeah, it's about the size of a Mondeo about the size of a Ford Mondeo um, and the Mondeo is too small because I was looking at those as well. So the VF um, for a, a 2016 to 2017, they stopped making the VF in 2017-2018. For a VF Commodore SV6, having done about 40 to 50,000 kilometres, you're looking at about $30,000. Um, and I just can't, I just can't justify the extra expenditure. 
um, my beautiful fiance not only wanted me to get a newer one but wanted me to upsize to a V8 from the V6 um, I had permission to buy a bigger, better, faster, grungier car um, but um, yeah I've just decided that I don't really need a V8 for a start for the kind of driving I do I don't need a V8 um, and I'd much rather put that money on mortgage repayments than um, car repayments and you know looking after the car it's going to last me until see, I'm 41 it's going to last me until I'm 60 hopefully I've said it numerous times in the past and I will say it again the Honda VTR 1000 is the best bang for buck bike anyone could ever buy if you want a uh, 100 horsepower sport bike out of all the motorcycles I've ever owned this bike, this particular bike um, would have to be the best the absolute best and if I sold Manfred would I regret it? Probably, but the fact is this riding position just doesn't agree with my aging body. This was another car I was considering, the G6E Falcon. It's like a luxury executive large size sedan. on the road. The majestic New Zealand Falcon like sweet roadkill. It was a possum that was dead. Oh shit eh? Oh bloody smack bang into a tree. Smack bloody bang into a tree people. Look at that. Look at that mess. That's what happens when you take this road a little bit too fast you don't know it. Wow. 
Holy shit. Look how far forward that shit's been thrown. Wow. Don't really want to be slipping over here. Stereo's been stolen already. <laughs> wow. Oh, so they came around there, oh you can see, mounted that. Shit, eh? Got the tree. I thought the tree and the tree one. Look at that. Eh? Could all be yours for the princely sum of, don't know, taking offers. Eh? Would you like that? Taking offers. Let the bidding begin. Don't insult me, please.